Okay, in this section we're going to talk about C3 and C4 plants. Approximately 70% of all plant species are C3 plants, and they're called C3 plants because the first compound that's produced following carbon dioxide fixation is a three carbon compound. The form of, re of uh, photosynthesis that we've discussed so far involves C3 plants. So problem with C3 plants is that they are susceptible to photorespiration. And the reason they're susceptible to photorespiration is because the light dependent reaction that produces oxygen and the Calvin cycle where this oxygen can pose a problem occur in the same chloroplast. So if we go back and look at this chloroplast, remember uh, the way this is going to work, we're going to have the light dependent reaction occurring right here in the thylakoid and the thylakoid lumen. So the pigments are embedded in that thylakoid membrane. So this light dependent reaction, we got these, we have, not we got, we have these uh, photosystems, these pro, uh, pigment complexes embedded in that uh, thylakoid membrane. And this is going to uh, pick up the light energy. And then the first thing that's going to happen in this process is water is going to be split. When that water is split, it's going to give off oxygen. The oxygen accumulates in this, in this uh, chloroplast, and then it diffuses out of the chloroplast into the, into the uh, mesophyll cell, diffuses out the mesophyll cell into the airspace in the leaf, and finally diffuses out of the leaf into the atmosphere. Okay, so we have in C3 plant, we have the light dependent reaction occurring right here on the, th uh, on the thylakoid and that is going to produce oxygen. Now the other part of this chloroplast is the stroma. The stroma is going to be the site of the Calvin cycle in these C3 plants. So let's go down here, here's the Calvin cycle. And what should happen in the Calvin cycle is right here. The uh, CO2 the CO2 right here should feed into this process of the Calvin cycle. We're going to use some ATP energy to restructure that. The ATP energy was uh, the ATP was formed by photophosphorylation using light energy to tack that phosphate on there. We're going to transmit that energy now into restructuring these intermediate compounds we're going to pick up these hydrogens that were originally gleaned from the water. We're going to tack that on there to ultimately make these carbohydrates, so glucose and other carbohydrates from this process of the Calvin cycle. So if we have a shortage of carbon dioxide right here and we have an abundance of oxygen, O sub 2, right there. Well, the oxygen is going to feed into this process instead of the carbon dioxide. And that's because of this stuff right here. Big old long name, ribulose biphosphate. This ribulose biphosphate doesn't really care if it picks up carbon dioxide or if it picks up oxygen. It will accept either one of those. And so it's just a matter of whichever one is more readily available. You may know some people like that. And so uh, with the uh, ribulose biphosphate, if it picks up the oxygen, we don't have carbons coming in to yield carbons coming out. So this process of, this process of uh, photorespiration will reduce carbohydrate production right here by as much as 50%. So, these C3 plants, if I can get this to respond. I will not respond. Okay, so we've got to turn the drawing tool off to get that to respond. Okay, so these C3 plants, these are adapted to cool, moist conditions. 
Under cool, moist conditions, the stomata will remain open and the supply of carbon dioxide remains high. Under hot, dry conditions, the stomata will close and will choke off the supply of carbon dioxide, but we still have oxygen produced in, in that chloroplast, and then the oxygen enters into the Calvin cycle and reduces the production of carbohydrates. So here's our diagram of the cross section of the leaf. And right down here, we have a stoma, plural would be stomata, and those stoma are open during the day, which allows carbon dioxide to enter. And then it also allows water, uh, water vapor to uh, be lost from that leaf, which provides evaporative cooling. When the, uh, when we, in order to keep that, those guard cells inflated and that stoma open, we have to have an abundance of water. Those guard cells are inflated with water. The, uh, when the, when the, uh, under hot and dry conditions, the, uh, these guard cells will collapse and close that stomata, which reduces the loss of water, but it also cuts off the supply of carbon dioxide coming into the plant. Okay, let's look at C4 plants. With C4 plants, they're called C4 because the first compound produced following carbon dioxide fixation is a four carbon compound. And unlike that ribulose biphosphate, the enzyme that initially picks up the carbon dioxide and fixes it in a C4 plant could care less about oxygen. It will not accept oxygen at all. And so photorespiration is not a problem in C4 plants. So we had about 70% of all plant species are C3 plants. About 28% of all plant species are C4 plants. Okay. Now then, the light dependent reaction in, C, in the C4 plants, the light dependent reaction and carbon dioxide fixation occur in the mesophyll cells. That occurs in the same cell but remember uh, this time oxygen production from the light dependent reaction is not going to be a problem because the enzyme that picks up carbon dioxide in this case is not that RUBP it's something different and it will not pick up the oxygen so we've got a very efficient means of picking up carbon dioxide so this produces a four carbon compound with that recently fixed CO2 and this moves from the mesophyll cells into the bundle sheath cells. Once we're over in the bundle sheath cells the carbon dioxide is released and then the Calvin cycle can occur in the bundle sheath cells without any interference from the oxygen. So notice right here in red and everything is supposed to get your attention because maybe you might see this again. The light dependent reaction which produces oxygen and the Calvin cycle where oxygen can pose a problem occur in separate cells in the C4 plants. And one of the things that we see is that most of the C4 plants are tropical grasses. Things like corn, sorghum, sugarcane, Bermuda grass, crabgrass, all these things that the hotter it gets the faster they grow. So the C4 plants are adapted to hot conditions. C4 plants are going to grow best in Mississippi summer. The C3 plants are going to grow best in Mississippi during the fall, winter, and spring under those more cool, moist conditions. Okay, let's look at this diagram. Here in the C3 plants, you notice the chloroplasts are seen only in the, uh, only in the mesophyll cells. We do not have any chloroplast here in the bundle sheath cells. Over here in the C4 plant, we have chloroplasts here in the mesophyll cells, and those chloroplasts contain an abundance of thylakoid for the light dependent reaction. Then we also have chloroplasts over here in the bundle sheath cells, and these chloroplasts have very few thylakoid, and this is mainly going to be the site of the Calvin cycle. So we separate the process that 
produces oxygen from the process where oxygen is going to be a problem. Okay, in this diagram, what we see is uh, the mechanism as to how a C4 plant works. You've got the mesophyll cell right here, and then you have the bundle sheath cell. So the mesophyll cell right up here, you got the bundle sheath cell right down here, and what we're going to see is that the uh, we've got a very efficient mechanism here for capturing CO2. So carbon dioxide is captured or it is fixed here in the in the mesophyll cell, and then it's going to form a four carbon compound. This four carbon compound is going to be restructured. We'll come over here into the bundle sheath cell. We're going to jump, drop off the uh, carbon dioxide, which leaves this as a three carbon pyruvate or pyruvic acid that can go back to the uh, mesophyll cell. Then we're going to use right here, we're going to use some of our ATP energy not to directly make carbohydrates, but to keep this pumping mechanism running, to keep this mechanism of efficiently uh, capturing CO2 and pumping it over here to the bundle sheath cells. Keep that running. Okay, so it's an efficient system. It prevents, uh, prevents photorespiration because the process that makes oxygen is occurring up here with the light dependent reaction and then the process where oxygen can be a problem is down here with the Calvin cycle. So we pump the carbon dioxide into the Calvin cycle without having to compete with oxygen and very efficiently make glucose. But that comes at a cost. We have to use some of the ATP to keep this, keep this process running. Okay. okay, so let's look at this right here. And with the C3 plants, we're going to use 18 ATPs to make one glucose. Those ATPs are made by photophosphorylation, so light energy is absorbed and that light energy is used to tack that phosphate on to make the ATP. Now with C4 plants, we're going to use 30 ATPs to make one glucose molecule. 18 to run the uh, Calvin cycle, just like in a C3 plant, but an additional 12 ATPs to run that C4 carbon dioxide fixation mechanism, that pumping mechanism to uh, get the carbon dioxide into the uh, bundle sheath cells away from the oxygen. So which one of these is more efficient? Well, it depends. The C3 plants can make the same amount of glucose with less ATP, thus they can make the same amount of glucose with less light energy. But if you have uh, if you have hot dry conditions those C3 plants are going to undergo photorespiration and we're going to lose glucose production. The C4 plants have to have more ATP to make a glucose thus they have to have more light energy to make one glucose molecule but under hot dry conditions the C4 plants can just keep everything running because they can, they have this efficient mechanism to pump the uh, carbon dioxide into the Calvin cycle. So under cool moist conditions, the C3 plants are more efficient and will grow faster. Under hot dry conditions, the C4 plants are going to be more efficient and will grow faster. So it's all a matter of adaptation. Thank you.